Hello and welcome to the next 100 Days podcast. My name is Graham Arrowsmith. And my name is Kevin Appleby. Well, no, Graham, one thing that definitely fascinates me is getting the best out of people. And you know, I keep looking into the world of sport and seeing what we can take from sport into business. And we've got a guest today who's worked both in sport and in business. And mm. what's even better than that, the sport just happens to be our favourite game. Yeah, um, uh, we uh, have uh, somebody who has been and hopefully I think still is the Queen's Park Rangers goalkeeping coach. It's Daniel Okunetsky. And uh, Daniel, welcome to the next 100 Days podcast. Morning, you do. Hello. Uh, welcome. to. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be to be here today and uh, chatting to you guys. And I believe you're from Lithua- Lithuania. Have, have I got that right? I'm originally from Poland. Um, Poland. I, okay. I did spend some time in Lithuania working on a project, yes. Okay. Oh, we like the polls. Um, we, we've had uh, uh, more than one poll on the on the show, and one of my favourite people is uh, is a poll, but um, we, we won't go into that. Uh, she's like an extra daughter, but so basically, um, but um, but yeah. Anyway, um, so Daniel, are you still working with uh, Queen's Might Rangers? Um, I finished um, working with them. Uh, it's been two seasons. Um, it's been a great experience. Um, but from a part time role, I decided to actually take a step out and. Um, and continue pursuing a full-time um, career in in in, in football, um, yeah. Okay. and yeah, we 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 finished this this month. Okay, all right. Well, um, well, hopefully their fortunes uh, 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 go down this season because we'll be playing them a bit later. Yes. But, um, um, sorry, my my t- my team and your team both came into or Q- QPR both came into the football league at the same time in 1920. I can't remember when 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 did Newcastle come in? Pre- presumably a bit earlier than that, Kevin. Oh, uh, it's it's emblazoned everywhere in the branding, Graham. 1892. Oh, I see. Okay, Fair. and and it's it's been that long since you've won anything, hasn't it? Well, just about <laughs> yes. But so anyway, but 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 uh, <laughs> uh, um, but, but no. We are on that auspicious day, Graham. Today, as we record this, it's the 31st of August. The the, the transfer deadline day hasn't quite approached us, but today is the draw for the Champions League. So are you in it? Who are we going to play? Oh right, you're in it. Oh right, okay, fine. Oh, okay, well, um, it used to be a fairly regular thing for my team, but uh, but not so much nowadays. Um, but um, well, I, I hope you get a good draw, Kevin, and um, some, somebody like Real Madrid or something like that. That'll be, that'll, that'll <laughs> test you. Um, but um, um, Daniel, you you obviously have used your knowledge of football to help business. So, um, tell us a little bit more about that experience. Uh, yeah, it actually worked uh, the other way around. Um, oh, um, right. I sort of started playing football when I was younger, uh, which is the usual sort of uh, uh, history story about playing and finishing young injury. That prevented me going forward. And back in the days, there was a slightly different approach to uh, academy coaching and, and talent development and, and generally player development. Um, and I left Poland um, uh, 26 years ago. And um, I've always always had... Um, I uh, wanted to come to England and um, arrived here in 1997, became a sport instructor and um, worked in sports in a way all my life. Um, but at that point, um, I also had to sort of decide on what my career is going to be. Um, and I ended up in, um, a long story short, I ended up in um, operations uh, management. Um, so I sort of um, invented myself in that in that aspect and, um, and been working since... Um, Really, early early two thousands and um, um, up until now, and I, I sort of translate both football to business and business to football, um, especially when it comes to people development uh, and team building and, and and searching for for synergy in, in in teams. So you 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 um you drag people onto the football pitch then and 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 let them do a bit of uh, running around after a ball. Um, being a goalkeeper coach, uh, which I always loved, but never had the opportunity to be actually coached and developed in in in, in that position. I, I played a centre back uh, number four usually, and I always look back and say, "Ah, oh, what if? What if?" Well, never never happened. It was different times then. Yeah. Um, I, I sort of, uh, from the operational point of view, I look at the aspects of off the pitch operations and on the pitch, how we can link those two and merge them. Um, often that sort of split and the head coach is responsible for on the pitch performance and no one really looks at the off the pitch aspect, which I believe is very strongly connected. And uh, um, we'll come to that a little. What do you mean by that, though, off pitch? 
off the pitch. It's all the preparation and organization that needs to take place, uh, connecting the strategy of the club with what we really want to achieve on the on the pitch, which is which is sort of looking at the purpose of what we want to do and why. Um, I, I bring the, the the what and the why and let the head coach of the team perform with the team on the pitch, deliver the training sessions, the, deliver the development with the sort of aspect of who and when. So we connect the four, what, why, who and when. Um, and that's where my sort of magic number four comes in, as I was born on the 4th of April, 1974, on Thursday. And I still <laughs> say to my mother, why not 4 a.m. or 4 p.m.? <laughs> that would work well. Uh, well so you should those... have been coaching your mum before you were born, you see. <laughs> <laughs> well, some, there's been, been some really f- fantastic footballers with, who've had four on their back, haven't they? I mean, certainly in my club, the, the most iconic is Billy Bremner. And, um, you know, probably at his time before, just about when you were being born, I guess, um, he was probably one of the best players in the world. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, but you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure, Kevin, in Newcastle United land, there's been a few decent fours. Well, the decent four that I remember is Terry McDermott. Yeah, OK. Yeah, another, another really good um, footballer. And, and I don't know, uh, Paul and um, um, I was going to say uh, Matausch, Klee, uh, uh, I think he's Klee. Uh, pronoun- Klee, yeah. Well, I some some people say click, don't they? But yes. my friend Veronica suggested that it was Klee, Klee. but I I'm, click right. Okay, fine. She doesn't know anything. She's not, a <laughs> but but um, but no, no. So, uh, so, but he's um, well, he wasn't really a four, but um, fantastic player nonetheless. But uh, okay, Very good player. I think if you're a supporter of any football team um and you're watching the performance of players you often wonder what the heck have they been doing before they got onto the you know why yeah. weren't why weren't for instance the uh, um the, the, the did not practice shooting at the goal did they not um practice um almost like the you know the routines for throw-ins and stuff in other words, that almost like I know that might fall into the head coach's area, but it isn't. There is a state of mind that says I want to be really good at these things. Every player wants to be good at things. Every player wants to be at the top one day, playing professionally. Um, that's 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 usually the dream that drives not only players but coaches as well. Um, and it, it comes down to um, what I sort of. Um, look at, at talent development because I, I believe every player is talented no matter the age no matter the stage of the of the career they are talented in in why, one way or another they've got a skill they've got something that sits in in, in them and, and lets them do things that other people potentially can't do um and looking at the sort of um player um personal sort of characteristics i look at the determination um resilience and optimism and if any of those three ingredients uh come together in the coaching team and 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 and, and the performing teams uh of, of players we say 11 players but usually there's more than that mm. and everyone has that little bit of of those three and you can extract that and and create a synergy between what i usually look at horizontal um relationships between players uh, and put in the context of the vertical responsibilities of the of the particular structure, then you've got a team that pulls together, and they'll be working hard in training sessions, off the off the pitch, outside of 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 of, of the club. And coaches would spend, I mean, numerous hours. I mean, people say, you know, I, I, there's no forty hours a week. Um, I remember working um, 60, 70 hours a week, seven days a week, um, in Lithuania when we when we took the project over from the Lithuanian Federation, it was hard work, but it paid off. And, and we had a great team. We won a, a lot of trophies and players play across Europe. Um, but again, as, as, as you ask, um, it's, it's more about um, the periodization, what players follow and what coaches implement, what's the strategy of the club. And, and everyone does all, all, all those things, shooting, playing out from the back, um, playing under pressure. Um, every goalkeeper works on distribution. But when in the, it comes to the game, we, we often look at the technical and physical aspects and a little bit of a tactical, which, which many people don't really have a good understanding of. 
when really the psychological side plays plays the 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 the, the biggest part in 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 the performance of a player. Mm. I well, I don't know about you, Kevin, but it's it's the psychology. Um, it just seems to be one of those most important things, whether it's football or business or whatever. It it, it because what's in your head is what's going to make you perform. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I'm a, a huge believer in having to have the right mindset in whatever you're doing. And it's it's the process you go through to get that mindset that, that fascinates me. And Daniel, what, what sort of processes would you take your young goalkeepers through to get that mindset right? I would engage them from the start. Um, for me, the important thing is that we are on the same page um, and I'm there for, for, for them and they're there for themselves. They want to achieve, they want to get every day as it comes, get better, improve and move forward. Um, I, I I look at the engagement from two perspectives, two sides of, the, of, 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 of it. Um, before we get to the pitch and while we're on the pitch and then what happens before the game and what happens um, or what happens during the game. Um, so there's always an, an approach of um, action reaction. There's always two way relationship. I, I, I tend to invite them into conversations and, and let them ask the why's all the time. I mean, millennials nowadays just ask why every second, every second word, but it's, it's always about, you know, what, what do you want? So I look for reasons why are you here. What, what what's your purpose? Why you want to play football? I want to be famous. Okay, I want to get to the top. I want to be professional. Okay, but give me more. What what sits inside you? So I try to extract those elements, and I, I usually perform um, when I start a project. I, I go through various things in terms of functionality and strategy of my of my approach and how I implement structures to design models. But I look at things like eleven reasons. I have this 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 uh, mini mini part of the projects that I do. What's your reason? And that goes for business environment, for players, for goalkeepers, for any anyone who performs and wants to get to the higher level and wants to have that unique selling point, that edge that actually takes them over the other 20, 30, 40 or, or uh, 100,000 players. And I, I ask them, what, what's your reason? And usually what I get is an excellent stuff that comes out of that. It's love, it's uh, passion, it's the adrenaline, it's the challenge. It's, it's all those elements that I, I, I then put together and form the DNA of the player. And I know he's here because he loves it. This one is here because he's passionate about it. This one is here because he's hardworking and he loves it. And I put them together and, and, and implement the training and development accordingly to who they are before mm. we get to do what they need to do so it's so, more about that looking at the people first that's really in interesting i was talking to somebody else uh, yesterday about um how they'd done a course which enabled them to uh gear the training to the individual's personality and in, in a sense that's just what you've said it's difficult it's it's always difficult because we have the periodization you've got to do the technical, tactical, physical, mental aspects within the session. You've got to follow what you have in terms of the syllabus and curriculum. But the, the, at the end of the day, if they don't feel it, if they if they don't feel like doing it, it it's just going to be pointless. You, you'll be sort of going against their nature, against who they really yeah. are. And this is where I get from people to passion. Um, it's, it's how I connect that to then arrive with the, with the purpose. And it's usually the purpose of the club mm. uh, that sits in strategy, purpose of the coach. Coaches do come and go. Um, no one stays long. Players develop over the years. Coaches change. They have different vision, different strategy, different plan. And I try to put the purpose in place so we all are following the same um, principles. We're on the same page. You, you have a really... Um, it's really difficult for me to pronounce this, but it's it says... It's Arbage Ar Ar Glider. Arbage Glider, right? Okay. Arbage Glider. Yes. Love that. Which means joy at work, joyful work. Um, it's the only one single world, ex world existing on the planet that can describe that exactly what I said. Um, joyful work, joy at work, happiness at work. It's a Danish concept. Ah, oh, okay. gonna, that's really interesting. Um, so, so that's actually a Danish word, then. It is. It is. It is Danish. It's Danish concept of of how you create 
uh, uh, workplaces which are happy for people to work within and how you can create a synergy out of that by creating that environment that's inviting that lets you be uh, let, engages you lets you be creative open-minded um, and and this is where the number three comes in uh, in my in my sort of approach uh, which usually which usually goes for the positive approach optimism confidence um, three and four are very powerful numbers and and then three especially it gives you the sort of ability to be curious about things um, searching um experiencing all those little things yeah. and that I, I love the concept um and i love um danish um um people live in a particular way they 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 like every day they love mondays i love mondays uh, they want to get everything out of life in the, in a little bit come away but also when when they've got when, when they've got a focus on the task they they pull together and they get that extra force from that happiness and i think that joy always seeking joy is, is well i i can agree with you on remarkable. that in, in in the 1980s I, I worked for a danish company called lego and lego um um is actually lego itself is it comes from the words uh, legot which is to play well uh, which is, is a similar sort of idea uh, but yeah. i suppose aimed at children uh, um but the idea of um, um playing well etc but that that's a word that i've not come across until until you uh, raised it um and um it's a fantastic word just pronounce it again because there'll be people out there that think what what was that word again <laughs> arbets glider Arbert's glider, right? Okay, well, and, and it's and it's to love the sort of work you're doing. Joyful work. Joyful. Joy- work. Yes, yes, yes. Happiness at work. Um, Arbeit is, is from work, um, um, and glider is um, all okay. that. So happiness, to, the joy. Apparently, it's 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 on ninety nine percent of all accountants' desks that that work. They they love their work, don't they? Let's face it. Really? No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> probably got it backwards, haven't they? Probably means something backwards, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, never tried it. Never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the clever of listeners will will have already worked out what it means backwards. Uh, but um, but it, it, you are obvi- obviously from Poland, and uh, you you've made a career in this operations. Tell us, do you have clients? I do. I do. Um... Not regularly. It comes uh, with projects. Um, I tend to engage in in long term projects um, of uh, culture change, um, restructuring, redesigning. Um, my my sort of initials are DO, which I was um, um, chatting to Kevin the other day. I, I do things. Um, Nike should be paying me, or maybe I should be paying Nike. Just do it, and and things when they land on the table, and I, and I see what's the challenge. I just I just get on with it and and and, and do it. So I sort of um, invented myself in a way, or I actually had to reach down deeper in my 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 sort of inside and see what I'm good at and what I what I do well. And I I, I came up over twenty years ago with this uh, a purpose that I get out of working with other people that we share the same passion for getting either the project successful or building a new. Uh, company organization so I develop relational organizations my initials are DRO and I, I sort of develop myself in that respect and I always look at the relationships between people systems functionality um, and I design operations that's what I do um, and the other thing I, I do pretty pretty well has been 10 years of, of goalkeeper um, development in sport that's how I wanted to get the connection between the pitch and off the pitch part of of, of the sort of football and sports so I noticed on your website and um, um, so Daniel Okonesky dot com and uh, we'll we'll put the link in the show notes. Um, you 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 mentioned one particular client and it looks like it's some sort of hotel client called Bliss. Tell us a Bliss. bit about that. Bliss um, Bliss Hotel Group. Um, those guys, um, Daniel Brock, Robert Argus, and um, Kevin Potter. I I I came about to work again following successful project of the Everman Cinema Club um, back when we started in 2000 um, when I joined and in 2001 when I when I became the operations manager there. Um, it was a single site cinema in Hampstead and um, we redesigned it. Um, Daniel Brock who purchased the, 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 the cinema a year earlier in 1999 I believe at the end of it 
um, wanted to develop something unique, um, much more about people. Um, and we we sort of long story short, we decided to merge the hospitality, hotel hospitality with with the cinema experience. And that's why we came up with this club idea. Uh, nowadays, for 42 sites across UK, um, Everyman Cinema Club is a very successful um, um, organization and has the same DNA as planted in um, back in early 2001 to 2004 when we um, when we designed it. And Bliss Hotel Group uh, was an, a, again another project, a brave and, and quite challenging project as well. It was about creating a seamless customer journey for a new resort um, hotel uh, type of operations um, in Southport. Um, unfortunately, COVID came in, in between and, and, and changed things. Um, that project may still be completed one day, but it's, it's, it's got to the point where there's still a lot to be, to be done. I designed a bespoke functionality for that um, project called C. I usually uh, work on uh, projects um, with the model in place um, based on the the, 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 the the brief, the strategy and and, and the sort of a, a project outline. I, I, I then take my sort of, as you would say, 100 days um, in the quiet times and I work out the, the, the model and model for the um, Bliss Hotel Group was C, stay, eat and experience. Um, we couldn't influence the product, uh, the beds. We were selling beds. Hotels sell beds. Um, and you can't influence anything but the packaging, but the services outside. So we 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 went into this sort of um, we took the same route as with the Everman Cinema Club. Instead of trying to influence the product, which was film, which we couldn't change, um, we decided okay, we sell very good beds. We have much better uh, beds nowadays, but now we need to give more to the main course, but not just the just just the main dish. So we decided to build dessert starters and and everything in to create that experience um as we did at the everman um which worked well so it's okay uh, that's really quite sensible and it because at the end of the day you're going to go for an evening sleep and you ideally you, you just want to be able to sleep and then do the rest of whatever you're going to do but what you're doing is thinking through all the other steps that they're experiencing as you say whether that's eating or you know, I mean, you say stay, eat, uh, experience, but if your a stay isn't just you in bed, etc., fast asleep, a stay is from the moment you're checking in or before before you ever yes. enter the premises. Uh, you know, you've already got this warm feeling because it looks good, um, and and then you're going in and you're greeted, um, and one of the best greetings. I th actually, I think it was at Lego years ago. I said, I, uh, uh, somebody was. Ex he, he got my call and says, Graham, I was expecting your call. And that made me feel 10 foot tall. Um, and it was it was almost like they, was, they were setting me up for being promoted into this part of Lego that uh, I hadn't worked in previously. But um, um, it, it, was just, it was just a really warm, made me feel brilliant. Now, the, the guy was probably more my age and I was a lot younger then. So he, he'd been around the block a few times and that, that really stayed with me. And I guess in a way that welcome that you get in hotels, et cetera, um, is, is part and parcel of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, creating that, again, looking for Arbit's Glider at work and, and, and giving people that happiness at work internally as, as customers, internal customers, and create a relationship with the external customers. It, 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 it creates a different bone. They, everyone then starts to feel like, the customers who's going to arrive and, and have a great time as I'm having great time while I'm working here. So it's more sharing the same, again, passion and, 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 and purpose. But yes, as you rightly say, um, just going a step forward and, 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 and trying sort of um, be ahead of the expectations and, 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 and surprise the element of surprises is, is, mm -hmm. is, is, is vital. Um, entering the room um, with the temperature preset lighting and, and fabulous view or a, a great room in, 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 in prepared for you there, welcome you with, with some extra surprises, for example. And that makes the whole experience, but it starts much earlier. It starts at the arrival. It starts when you, when you engage. And, and again, it's going back to the 
sort of beginning of our conversation it's all about engagement yeah. um, but it's not only that it's when you when you leave the club when you leave the hotel when you leave the organization what happens then you know you may you may you may come back one day and you never know yeah. and sometimes we have the the sort of exit interviews and, and and people think oh this is just one way no no it's never one way it is yeah. two way it's always two way i can go out and come back and, and help you with some other things when i develop as a player as i develop as a coach a manager or um, and you never know who stays in the room. It could be anyone famous, or it could be just yeah, regular. If, you, if you're leaving, if you're, you're leaving Ellen Road on a regular basis, then you you really don't want to come back. But you have a season ticket, so you have to do. So, um, <laughs> but um, I suppose it's a bit a bit like that at QPR on occasions. But um, it, it's interesting. You were you were saying this this all almost idea of surprise because it it feels like sometimes with our goalkeeper, he surprises you every time he plays because. It's the, the, you know if he plays really well then you are surprised but it, often there's some errors that kind of repeat so if you were a goalkeeping coach um, um, uh, with a particular eye on Elon Melier then you might be thinking to yourself what can I do to to improve his distribution and, and various things that we can see from the stands but he's only a kid he's 21 or something like that 22 and yeah. you know so the, there is an opportunity for that lad to develop and, and he's a good shot, shot stopper etc but yeah. There's there's a lot of work to be done, I think. Definitely, um, and this is this is how um, where I come um, with with my approach. Um, simplicity. Um, um, try to always simplify things to the point where in high pressure environment or high pressure situation or stressful situation, players and and anyone performing within a team um, to be an organization, Lego, Amazon, Google, or any other organization will always have a very simple structure to follow. Um, I strongly believe that failure to prepare is propelling to fail. Um, therefore, we always should train and develop individuals in, in a much more complex environments and, and much more stressful environments than the final performance itself, the final exam or the game on Saturday or Sunday, because then that becomes an easier, easier mm -hmm. thing to go through and 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 it brings more joy, less stress, more joy, and that unlocks the potential. How you create the relationships with, between used to be two players, then we went into three players. Now we look at four players being connected together. Mm. Um, the amazing stuff out there about how players of one nationality in particular team can work better out if there's three or four of them mm. rather than having people from all over the place not really in 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 in, in well connected um so there's always looking for those elements and I, I believe that when you get to the pitch as a player as a goalkeeper I, I want you to be looking at two things you have the ball you don't have the ball what happens in between is 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 in, in, important moment but it, it's a very short moment of of of, of time the ball can be uh, lots of possession can 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 happen immediately after you regain it it's just it's just the dynamics of the game but when you look at things like if i have the ball what do i need to do I, am i in the right place it's the right time right place okay i'm sorted okay what's my decision what's the information i collect what do i do the next stage after i organize myself i decide the decision process is very quick and sometimes we say oh he doesn't make good decisions he doesn't he doesn't understand he doesn't he, he, you know he's slow he's he's too fast it's all about understanding the triggers and the information that the, the, the player or the, the person receives in terms of the perception um and obviously the environment which we create around can can either be increasing the stress or or, or, or making it more joyful more easy to 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 uh, perform and then final element is the reaction what do I do? It's physical, technical, and, and tactical delivery. Um, before we get to that, it's obviously the physical and, and psychological and mental preparation, which is which is what needs to happen in, in, in the development stage. But when you get to the pitch, it's very quick. One, two, three. Organize, decide, and react. And that way, players know what to do immediately when we have the ball or we don't have the ball. How do we organize ourselves? What's the next stage? And, and that helps, um, especially the goalkeepers who... Uh, I believe are the most complex roles on the pitch, and 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 they're also a uh, um, right hand um, man to the head coach because they see the pitch um, in a vertical view. Coach only can see it horizontally, so coach can see some relationships horizontally and uh, uh, ver vertical relationships. Um, 
vertical responsibilities coach can see from one side but the goalkeeper can see up the pitch which he sees the horizontal relationship so he can he can actually implement the discipline the the the, the uh, that's why we say oh we need a good leader we need someone who's well organized can uh, be disciplined why because they need to control uh, people mm. from the back looking from left to the right they don't see um from the sort of bottom up but the coach can see it from left to right which is then the bottom up and those two views are complementing each other mm, interesting yeah very it's an interesting sort of uh, perspective i i mean watching a game of football earlier on this week we we lost to a lower league uh, uh, team in uh, salford and basically the, the, it went to penalties and there's i think we lost on it was i think 9 8 in the end and basically our goalkeeper which we got from kevin's um, um t- they obviously they obviously uh, they saw us coming um but basically he, whatever he did he couldn't he just whereas he, he got in the way of two of them but one he stepped off before the ball was kicked and this is the first time i've ever seen it he was booked for it so he was literally booked for taking a step off which is deemed you know, uh, on, you've got to have one foot on the on the line when a when a. But he was he taken action a bit too prematurely. Saved the ball. It was retaken. They scored. They won. So, but he was booked for it, which is really interesting. Hmm. I don't know if this is a feature that you're aware of now, because that would stress me if I was a goalie. Well, well, it's, it's, it's a very stressful uh, role to be in. There. Hmm. Hmm. I do like that idea that you're saying create the stressful situation outside of the game. Yeah. yeah. So that when you're on the pitch, it's more joyful. It's there's less to think about. There's you, you can make decisions better. But certainly that role as a goalkeeper, you get into those positions, you're in a penalty shootout. That is gonna be high stress. Mm. That's the only player that's involved in every one of the penalties. Mm. The striker or whoever's taking the penalty kicks the ball once. Keeper's got to save five of them. Uh, do, you know, do you know what I would do, Dan? I, I, I'd actually stand still in the middle with my arms wide and not move for the first three. And that would really... He's going to do this again. Uh, you know, and, and so I'll go one... But I, I, I don't know whether... You often think, he's just put it right down the middle. Why don't you just stand still? But of course, he's making a decision. He's taking action. And he's going. Is is he thinks it's going that way, so he's going to jump that way. It is difficult, and who'd want to be a goalie? Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a short space of time. Uh, observe, yeah. collect the information. Um, at that point, you make a decision and stick to the decision you made, and then you react. Yeah. Um, and only that sort of full confidence and 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 that sort of um, believe that this is what I'm going to do, yeah. and do it um, actually takes you. To another level, um, so you don't hesitate, you don't have any doubts. You know you you've trained this, and funny enough, in training sessions, you ask the goalkeepers, "Do you want to do some penalties?" Yeah, I'll, yeah, we're up for it. It's less the players maybe I want to do it, but um, the goalkeepers are always up for it. It's, it's it's a great challenge for them, and if they stop, the feeling of stopping that it's it's uh, it's, it's it's great. It's, it's it feels amazing when you see player goalkeeper when they make a save in the game. It's different celebration than when they make a save than when they when they save penalty. It's just observe that. It's, it's quite quite unique yeah. how they really feel strongly about um, doing that well because it's such a short distance. You don't really have many, you know, a lot of chances. Chances, you know, you you're up against, you know, m- most likely that you 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 will um, not not stop the shot. Um, and 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 again, players may not hit the target. That's another thing, but. Y- Usually, it's a combination. Is there's a there's a lot lot of things that um, happen in that moment. That that sense though of of helping, like you say, one of the most technical roles on the pitch. Um, you know, to get into the mindset to improve the odds because the odds of them serving a penalty and 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 a series of penalties are pretty low. Um, that you know often find goalkeepers who who save more than. I don't know, two or three out of five or whatever, um, let alone one out of 10. And it's like, it, it's, so yes, they'll practice it, but do they have a real expectation of getting from 10% to 15%? Is it is it that that's in their mind, that, that there's a low expectation, therefore I don't mind practicing it because if I fail, I fail. Do you, do you see what I mean? Is that, is that 
part of their thinking style? Or can you increase the um, stress level to say, look, you don't save this. We're out. No cup for you. I don't know how you would do that. Well, the, 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 the key and the holy grail of, of, of um, developing um, a player or a person is um, doing the way that they don't know and they're not aware of being that they're being developed. <laughs> um, so it's always, you know, out of the blue, okay, let, let's do some penalties. Uh, it's not just because you just felt like it. You know, I usually plan that and, and, and say, if the session goes like this, I will do some penalties today. I will see if they feel... Uh, up for it and i know that i can get something out of it i'm just going to make them feel miserable um by doing that sometimes i i have a plan but i don't i don't i don't execute i i i move that in in time um because i i believe you've got to have clear mind you've got to be prepared mentally to do that um they they, they say that players taking penalties the the, the biggest stress they 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 are under is between the walking from the middle of the pit to the penalty mm-hmm. um area um, and that's amazing, you know how those few seconds of, um, in, in some cases, could be could be obviously longer. But when they walk down, what do they think? And also at that point, the goalkeeper needs to have the same thinking process in in, in going on. So it's always about removing that, trying to isolate yourself from all the outside and focus on what you've got to do. And again, three step process, I believe is, 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 is the, is, is, is the key. Don't, don't go into complicated routines. And if, if the player is going to put the foot like this, the ball like this, look at the body language, what you feel strongly about, what are your the best skills, what you have practiced in the, in the week or in the last few weeks that actually worked seven out of 10, you say to the, to this side, Try that, and some goalkeepers do that. Obviously, they need to be also creative and change because players will 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 have the, the knowledge of how they how they respond, and 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 they will try to score in a different way. So there's there's a lot of preparation. The game takes place before the game, before they actually penalty shoot up. But at that point, when they are facing a player and a ball, um, um, it's just a it's just a decision and reaction, and stick to that. I noticed uh, one of the posts that you put out on uh, LinkedIn a few months ago um, uh, was uh, you were in um, um, Queen's Bay Rangers ground um, and and you uh, you said collect memories, not things. If you had to sort of collect a memory or two from from the sort of career that you've had since you've been in this sort of goalkeeping, coaching, etc. Uh, arena, what would the what would the standout memory be for you? Uh, people happy, smiling, seeing. When I look at the journey I've I've been I've been through, um, I always like to look at the f- photographs that I take with players, um, more or less depending on 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 the club and the environment, and I and I see the happiness, the joy they get out of after training session after the game. Um, and there's one particular standing out moment uh, in my coaching career um, um, about three years ago when I was in Lithuania. Um, coaches do put a, a lot of hard work. You, you, you're up in the morning. I was in the club eight in the morning, living eight in the evening, sometimes six, seven days a week. Uh, and you put a lot of effort into that and energy and passion. And obviously you, you try all those things uh, 100, 100, 110%. But there was one moment that I will never, never forget. Um when game ended and I usually went to collect my camera that was behind the goal, which is usually the routine I, I, I would follow. The game ended, um, we shake hands with the op- opponents and I, I walked down across the pitch by myself and then the team usually just gathers things and they go to the um, changing room. As I as I walked towards the, the sort of a goal to collect the camera, um, the team moves the other direction and, and, and the goalkeeper that was there actually comes away and and comes towards me and 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 shakes my hand and i've got that recorded from that camera and that moment it was just amazing that he recognized what i did for him and how well he performed in the game and and he he literally came to me say thank you coach and that was that was amazing thing that was the arbets glider that moment so there's a a little magic thing here that i can i can see 
the sports side, you've got the you've got the culture of the club, right? You're spending lots of time with the players off off the field. They're training with the coach on the field. And then the game comes along, and but footballers, yes, they're getting paid for this, but in some ways, it's not really work. They just enjoy, enjoy it as a the game they play. Take this into the work environment. I'm still just struggling a little bit, Daniel, to say, how do you get the same thing into the work environment? How do you get those smiling faces on your staff? I would say that's that's even much more challenging and much more difficult to achieve than the sports environment where players come and they've been selected and they, they want to be there yeah. and they w- want to perform. And they love it. In most cases, they just absolutely love it. In in the workplace, you may have people who don't really love it. They have to do it. Um, I always look at things um, from the perspective, even if I work for um, an organization, um, let's say as a regular employee, um, operations manager for for, uh, a charity organization I'm I'm, I'm working for at the moment. Um, You enter conversation and someone says, I just have to do it. It's my job. I have to do it. Um, and you start asking questions. Do you like anything about what you have to do? Well, there's actually something I like. Okay. So the key for me is how do I get from what you have to do to more what you like to do? Then you start getting more smiles and happiness rather than just the sort of have to do uh, element. Uh, if you can achieve I like at Lego, for example, the element that people love it, they love at least part of the job, then you've got much better functionality of a particular role or team or an organization. Um, I, I start with just like what you have. We have a good job. Um, you semi-enjoying it. There are things we can improve. Obviously, there's there's, there's cultural aspects and functionality aspects and, and, and overall management. But see what you can like more about what you have to do before you start loving what you do. But also what you have to do will help you and you start liking it, will help you do things in life that you love outside of that particular workplace. So I'll um, I'll give you an example of what we did at the Everman. Um, at the Everman, we achieved the investing in people standard. The award was difficult to achieve at that point. Um, and everyone said, oh, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. It's going to be too tough. It's going to take time and it's going to cost a lot of money. But I insisted that we do that. We go through the process, the process of assessment, looking at how people feel at work and how they 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 um how what kind of environment we create and at that point some some um suggestions were made in the process uh, what what should we what we could, could do um in in order to improve the sort of um uh, a working um um relationship the environment and just the general conditions and um out of many things we we designed an employee uh, or staff incentive based on um, obviously, the revenue generation and customer feedback, positive, um, negative, you would collect points and we would exchange that for, for various things. It's just the usual thing you, you find in a workplace. But one other thing we introduced was I, was, I would ask um, in, in the process of what you have to do and what you like and what you love to do in your life, some, some would come up with, uh, I love photography. Um, I work here because I have to get some income and I like the job, but I, I love photography. And what would help you to become a photographer? And, and uh, for example, I would need to do the course, which costs a lot of money. Okay, so we'll help you. We'll help you with that. We'll help you with the funding as long as you stay with us for X amount of time. And that worked amazing things. Um, we had people doing literature, photography, filming, I mean, you name it. You could do a Chinese language or you could do anything that you, you loved that you couldn't afford. We, we help people do it. And an amazing thing, which was a second moment um, before I, I sort of entered the football um, uh, coaching career, um, moment of Arbus Glider was back in about 2016 when I met the guy who we helped to complete um, a f- photography course. Mike, uh, he met me in the street shouting, Dan, Dan, Dan. I was like, what's happening in the middle of London? You know, he's shouting, someone's shouting my name. So he comes to me, say, yeah, yeah, hi. And it was so amazing. And he, and he said one thing, 
thanks for helping me at that, that, that time when you created this particular role for me being Captain Image in, in the Everyman Cinema Club, going around taking photographs, you know, every week for, for a few hours as a, as a sort of prescribed shift. I'm now working for this company and this company. And just recently I saw him on LinkedIn and, and he's doing some amazing stuff for, for, for really high profile companies. I'm like, wow, amazing, mm. and amazing. You- and and your intervention, the way in which you structured and helped other people structure the Everman, created that for him. I believe so. That, that there's a little bit of um, my DNA, how I would like to be developed in a way, and how I would like to find my um, purpose, and 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 how I would like to share my passion for what I do. Generally, I, I have passion for what I do. Um, and that's contagious, and I, I, I can share that. And, and, and happiness is one of the things that you 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 divide and it multiplies, and that's amazing. Well, Daniel, you've been a very impressive Polish guest um, on the next 100 Days podcast. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Graham, happiness at work is what it comes down to. Abbas Glider, yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I like that word. I, I like it even more that it's a Danish word. I have a, a, some something of a, an affinity with uh, um, a group of people who sing "We Are Red, We Are White, We Are Danish Dynamite," but um, that's what um, the Danes uh, are sing when they're in in uh, football crowds. But um, yeah, Daniel's really interesting. I mean, there there is there are parallels between football and and business and taking that it. it you know, I think people in in a football context probably have a, um, I don't know, probably a slightly better chance of being coached because they want to be. And that's that's part of what comes over here. It's getting people into a position that they want to be coached, they want to be helped, they want to do well. Mm. And that 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 is the one difference that stood out from for me that Daniel's goalkeepers mm. are there because they want to be there they're in the academy because they want to learn they want to succeed they want to be good at what they do yeah and we've got to remember that an awful lot of the people in the t- in our teams around us are there because it's a job because they want the money mm. and I, I i just love that trick of of turning that round into helping them with the things that they're really passionate about yeah even if those things aren't directly involved in the workplace well, I think it does work, and, and I think one of the things that sort of Daniel's brought to us today is the the it's almost like the appliance of the way in which he views the world from a goalkeeping perspective to the way in which the 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 coach views the world um, from the side of the p- pitch p- perspective, and they are different perspectives, and you can see different things happening. I don't particularly. I'm I'm the coach. I, I where I sit in the football ground, it's on it's the coach's side, so I have that match of the day view. I don't tend to like going behind the goal. I have done it uh, and watching from behind the goal, uh, particularly if you're an away ground and that's where you've been allotted. But basically, you you have a particular view, um, and some people just love that. That that's what they want to see. But for me, I, I prefer to see that kind of strategic view of the way in which play goes from the side. I don't know whether that says something about business as well. Probably does, but um, I don't know about you, Kevin. Well, I think you've got to take both views. And you know, as the business owner, as the person mm. in charge, your your view is probably strategically, where's this business going? What are our goals as a business? So on. I'd actually say if, if you're going to take something away as a challenge, for the next hundred days from this, take a different view. And instead of saying, what are your goals? What, what is it that makes you people tick? What are they passionate about? Yeah, that How came can out. you help them yeah. be joyful? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. taking a very different view of yeah. the game. Yeah, no, it sure is. And um, um, I just, yeah, I, I, I can, I hope that the coaches that, we have at our club, you have at yours, and coaches throughout business uh, take something from this podcast. It's been an interesting one, Kevin. And today, I've been Graham Arrowsmith. I've been Kevin Appleby. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>